if the judge rules, we will have no more buyer's agents and real estate commissions will be cut in half. Why am I paying the buyer's commission? I'll pay the seller's commission. Um, commissions are fixed and sellers are paying an inflated buyer broker amount to the buyer agency. It's an estimate of what these court cases might be worth in terms of damages that could be awarded to the plaintiffs. And it's big, big money. Imagine you are a middle-class American living in the suburbs and you have to sell your home. It's your biggest asset and you believe you'll be getting $400,000 for it. You find a buyer fast. The buyer has an agent. The buyer's agent negotiates the sale price down by $10,000. And even though that agent worked for the buyer and they worked against you, you have to pay them $10,500 in commission. How would you feel? This is exactly what happened to Christopher Morell, a middle-class man from Minnesota. Morell sued. He sued the National Association of Realtors, America's largest trade association. And he sued some of the most influential brokerages in America. Morell's lawsuit is the biggest lawsuit in American real estate. This lawsuit is almost certainly headed for the US Supreme Court. The potential damages could be as much as $54 billion. And if Morell wins, this lawsuit could make buyer agents obsolete. This video is brought to you by Hoseo, America's most advanced home buying and selling platform. Americans across the nation are saving on commissions with Hoseo.com. You can too. Check out Hoseo.com on the web or the Hoseo mobile app. This story begins in October 2017 in a suburb of Minneapolis. Christopher Morell lists his home for $400,000 on North Star MLS. He uses a seller broker from Remax Advantage Plus to represent him. The home stays on the market for just 35 days. Morell finds a buyer fast and the buyer has a broker from Keller Williams Realty. Morell pays his own broker 3.3% commission on this sale, so about $12,870. The buyer's broker helps negotiate the sale price down from almost $400,000 to $390,000. But then, Morell has to also pay the buyer's broker 2.7% commission. That's $10,530 on top of the $10,000 price reduction. The buyer broker worked for the buyer. That broker helped negotiate the sale price down, but Morell had no power to negotiate the buyer broker's commission. He just had to pay the full commission. Christopher Morell felt it was unfair that he had to pay the buyer broker commission, not the buyer who benefited from the broker's representation. And Morell believed he had to pay the buyer broker commission because of a National Association of Realtors rule. On March 6, 2019, Christopher Morell sued the National Association of Realtors. The NAR is America's largest trade association with 1.5 million members. Along with NAR, Morell also sued four of the industry's biggest brokerages. Realogy, America's largest brokerage that owns and operates top franchises like Century 21, Coldwell Banker, and Sotheby's. Home Services of America, Remax, and Keller Williams Realty. Morell also named some of the biggest local realtor associations as co-conspirators. These associations own or operate 20 major MLSs. These are some of the biggest MLSs in America. Bright MLS, Stellar MLS, Miami MLS, Canopy MLS, and more. And it's a class action lawsuit. The class consists of all home sellers who sold their properties on these 20 MLSs since March 6, 2015, and continue to do so. The NAR and other corporate defendants are represented by attorneys from Schiff Harden LLP. The law firm is known for being one of the oldest in Chicago, and they represented big names including AT&T and Michael Jordan. Seven new plaintiffs join Morrill. On April 15, 2019, Sawbill Strategic Incorporated, 
a real estate investment company, filed a similar lawsuit in the same court as Morrell. Sawbill Strategic had sold a home on July 18, 2016 in Minneapolis. Their sale price also was lower than their list price. Sawbill Strategic also paid a 2.7% commission to the buyer broker. On June 14, 2019, these two lawsuits were consolidated into one, and six litigants from across the nation joined the consolidated lawsuit. Michael Cole of Parker, Colorado, Steve Darnell of Park, Texas, Valerie Nagger of Dublin, California, Jack Ramey of Martinsburg, West Virginia, Jane Rue of Caledonia, Wisconsin, and Daniel Umpa of Rockville, Maryland. There are nine law firms that represent Morrell and the other petitioners. And these law firms have a track record for winning billion dollar settlements against corporate giants like Apple, Big Tobacco, Anthem, Volkswagen, BP, Samsung, Philip Morris, Toyota, and Visa. The biggest takeaway here? It's clear that the plaintiff's lawyers have the expertise and resources to take this case all the way to the Supreme Court. Honorable Justice Andrea Robin Wood. The judge in this case is impressive in her own right. When she was sworn in, Justice Andrea Robin Wood was the youngest judge to be appointed to the United States District Court. She graduated from the prestigious Yale Law School. Justice Wood started her legal career in 1999 as an associate at Kirkland & Ellis. She went on to become a senior attorney at the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. In 2013, President Barack Obama appointed Justice Wood as a judge to the Northern District of Illinois Court. The Buyer Broker Commission Rule Morrell's class action lawsuit primarily revolves around implementation and enforcement of the Buyer Broker Commission Rule. Buyer agents and buyer brokers represent the interests of the home buyers, not those of the home sellers. It's only logical that the buyers would then compensate buyer brokers. But to enter a listing into a NAR affiliated MLS, the Buyer Broker Commission Rule requires sellers and seller brokers to offer blanket unilateral offers of compensation to buyer brokers and buyer agents. NAR's handbook states that multiple listing services shall not publish listings that do not include an offer of compensation expressed as a percentage of the gross selling price or as a definite dollar amount. Morell and the other plaintiffs argue that if it weren't for this rule, buyers would pay for their agents themselves and be able to negotiate. Instead of letting the buyers pay negotiated commissions to the buyer brokers, NAR's buyer broker commission rule forces the sellers to pay inflated commissions to the buyer brokers. Brokers steer buyers away from low commission listings. NAR claims that sellers can offer as little as one penny to buyer brokers, but the lawsuit refutes that claim. The lawsuit accuses agents of steering home buyers away from listings that offer low commission. Most buyer brokers won't show homes to their clients unless heavily incentivized. Surprisingly, the MLS itself allows the agents to filter out listings based on the commission offered. This practice forces home sellers to offer inflated commission. Lower commission means less exposure, fewer buyers, and hence, a longer time to sell. Morell's lawyers accuse NAR and the corporate defendants of engaging in a conspiracy to keep commissions high. As an example, they cite how Keller Williams trains its listing brokers to dissuade sellers from reducing the buyer broker commission. Morell's lawyers presented this Keller Williams University training script as evidence. Can you reduce your commission? Let me explain what happens when you reduce a commission. Half of the commission goes to a cooperating agent. When you reduce the commission, you reduce the incentive for that agent to bring a buyer to your house. If an agent has 10 different houses, nine of which come with a 3% commission, one of which comes with a 2.5% commission, which houses do you think they're going to show? The one with the larger commission? Absolutely. You are putting yourself at a disadvantage competitively when you reduce your commission. Wouldn't you agree? I guess that's true. Hidden MLS fields promote anti-competitive behavior. The lawsuit alleges that there are specifically two hidden fields that magnify the anti-competitive effects of the buyer-broker commission rule. 
These fields are one, buyer agent commission, where seller brokers specify the commission buyer brokers will receive, and two, private agent remarks, where seller brokers often include additional financial incentives. Neither the home seller nor the home buyer can view these fields because they're available only to realtors. NAR allows buyer brokers to claim their services are free. The lawsuit argues that NAR's code of ethics expressly permits buyer brokers to tell buyers that their services are free. By disingenuously marketing their services as free, buyer brokers are able to discourage home buyers from negotiating the commission or searching for alternative brokers who may offer them a rebate or a discount. Commissions should be much lower. The lawsuit cites a 2002 study by economists Natalia Delcor and Norm Miller. This research compared the commission system of some advanced countries with that of the U.S. The economists concluded that based on global data, the total U.S. residential brokerage fees should run closer to 3%. NAR's response to the lawsuit. On May 17, 2019, the National Association of Realtors moved to dismiss Morell's lawsuit. NAR claimed that Morell's case was insufficient to maintain a claim and failed to allege the existence of any conspiracy due to misinterpretation of facts. Justice Andrea Wood denied NAR's motion to dismiss, stating, the court finds that plaintiffs have sufficiently pleaded that they suffered an antitrust injury from defendant's conspiracy. If it weren't for the defendant's conspiracy, home sellers would have paid a much smaller commission. On November 16, 2019, NAR and the other corporate defendants filed a response to the lawsuit. They denied the allegations of conspiracy, stating that NAR rules are pro-competition. In their defense, the corporate defendants claim that the 2002 study relied on by the plaintiffs overlooks the socioeconomic differences between the USA and other countries. Rex drops the bomb on NAR. Thank you for calling Rex Homes. This is Amanda. How may I help you? Yeah, I'm a realtor in Jacksonville, Florida, and my customer wanted me to um, show them one of your listings, but I can't find it on MLS. And what is Rex, by the way? Is it like a for sale by owner? No, ma'am. We're a full service brokerage. We just don't well, use the MLS. Why? Just never have. We save our sellers money since we've been so in So what do you pay for a commission? What do I get if There's I sell the house? Of there's not a preset amount. It is negotiable. Are you kidding me? Forget it. Bye. In January 2021, discount brokerage Rex Real Estate released over 700 calls with agents from across the nation. In the audio recordings, agents refused to show properties to their clients due to Rex's policy of cutting down on buyer agent commission. These tapes have been submitted by the plaintiffs as evidence. To know more about Rex Real Estate, check out our video, The Rise and Fall of Rex Real Estate. What would happen if NAR loses? If NAR loses, the potential damages could be huge. Here's an analysis by Alexander Munn, former senior litigation counsel at the BPE Law Group. Assuming an average home sale price of $300,000, a 3% buyer agent commission, and 2 million transactions per year, the damages would be $18 billion. Section 4 of the Clayton Act allows the courts to award treble damages in antitrust cases. And that's exactly what Morell and the plaintiffs are seeking. That's $54 billion. The lawsuit demands an order of injunction be passed under Section 16 of the Clayton Act. This will effectively stop the NAR and co-defendants from enforcing the buyer broker commission rule. Home buyers will have to pay the buyer agent's commission. This could bring the housing market lower than it already is. Shares of real estate giants like EXP, Remax, and Realogy will nosedive. Buyer brokers will be forced to offer competitive commissions and rebates. But that's not it. Most buyer agents could be rendered obsolete. Remember, more than 90% of buyers start their search online. Why can't they complete the entire transaction online? Finally, the lawsuit demands NAR and the defendants pay all the costs of this lawsuit, including attorney fees. You better believe this army of attorneys isn't cheap. All in all, Morell's lawsuit is set to have far-reaching effects on the real estate industry. 
As of today, Morell's consolidated lawsuit is seeking class certification for home sellers. The case is currently in the discovery stage as both the parties gather evidence. Do you think this lawsuit will end the 6% commission for real estate agents? Will buyer agents be obsolete? Or do you think the NAR will win? Let us know in the comments below. I've worked very hard on this topic. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to our channel. Oh, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we release new and interesting videos.